Good afternoon, my fabulous chemistry students. Video number eight, enthalpy. This will be our last video for this unit. Woohoo! Notice the H. Enthalpy is delta H. This is also our third time visiting this subject matter in this unit, so these notes should be pretty fast and quick. Okay. Um, this heat re released or gained by a system. Um, we measure in delta H. We have a table I which charts it for us in our reference tables, and we can determine it for um, different reactions in our potential energy diagrams. So enthalpy specifically is the energy or heat in a system, all right? And the natural order of things wants to have lower enthalpy or lower energy. Now, this is a common theme throughout the whole year. Nature likes low energy. And we've been pretty consistent upon this thing about this. Think of your little brother or sister or your little niece and nephew. They're all hopped up on sugar at a, at a birthday party. And before too long, they are going to crash because nature likes lower energy. Exothermic, again, releases energy to move to a lower energy state. Okay. Um, the most common types of reactions because less energy is what we want to get to with that lower activation energy. Specifically, the difference here between the reactants and the products is our delta H. This is how much heat was given off. I started up here at reactants. When the, pro when the reaction was done, I had products and I had this much energy. How much was given off? That delta H. Endothermic reactions, of course, absorb energy and move to a higher energy level, okay? These aren't as common because I kind of have to force this to go because it's not natural. I don't want to end up with a system with higher energy. It's got to be able to store it somehow. So again, my reactants are here. I have a certain amount of energy. That would be this much energy quantitatively. I finish with this much energy, and the difference is always final minus initial. So I have this much energy, this delta H, that is absorbed. And notice, I start with my reactants low and finish with my products high. That's how I know graphically that I am an endothermic reaction. So if I was given numbers over here, let's say this is 20 kilojoules and this is 60 kilojoules, you could tell me that, oh, I've... Wait, let's do, Mr. Milks, let's, let's not go up there. Let's call this 60 kilojoules, where the products line is. Then I would do pro products minus reactants, which would be 60 minus 20. And I would figure out that my delta H equals 40. So I can get a number from these charts if there is a number on my axis. Okay, that's basically the sum of this video, and we are done with the unit. We can now identify reactions as exothermic or endothermic by figuring out what their delta H's are. You do have practice on this, page 13 through 15, and that finishes up your practice packet, and we are all done. See you guys in school tomorrow.